Hello, my name is Skye, and today I'll be reading a book from my childhood published in 1972 by Diane Redfield Massey. The story takes place in a desert. A field mouse goes venturing out and realizes he has a new neighbor, Ratty. Mouse is very well kept, while Ratty is not. Mouse gets very annoyed with Ratty until he encounters danger and realizes the importance of good neighbors. And so the story begins. Mouse was a pocket mouse. He lived in a cozy little room underground. I love my house, said Mouse. Home sweet home. He ran up his tunnel and out into the moonlight. The desert was silver and still. Ouch, said a voice behind him. Oh, ouch, again. The cactus flower shook on the cactus plant. I'm getting it, ouch. Who's there? whispered Mouse. He stood near his tunnel, ready to run inside. I've got it, said the voice. Oh, my poor paws. A large flower fell down and rolled over. Oh, said Packrat, coming out. He was wringing his paws and crying. What's the matter? asked Mouse. I've got prickers, said the pack rat. He collected some cactus leaves and dragged them over the sand. What are you doing? asked Mouse, picking up the flower. I'm fixing up my doorway, said the pack rat, flinging his cactus onto a heap very near Mouse's side yard. Call me Ratty. We're neighbors. We are? asked Mouse. I just moved in, said Ratty. This pile of junk is my front door. Really? said Mouse, moving nearer. You can't see my door, said Ratty. It's underneath there somewhere. How do you get in? asked Mouse. It's not easy, said Ratty. Mouse stared at the heap of sticks and cactus. Rocks were sprinkled on top. It looked rather like the dump at the end of the town. Mouse glanced at his own neat doorway, swept clean that morning. His door knocker shone in the moonlight, and his door was cactus green. When I'm coming home with groceries, said Ratty, picking up a stone, that's when there's trouble. He threw the stone at his pile and smacked his paw. Things have a way of getting caught. You know how it is with prickers. The bag rips and there you have it, a mess. Why do you cover up your door that way? asked Mouse, sitting down on his step. Camouflage, said Ratty. If you throw a pile of junk in front of your house, nobody knows you live there. Don't you want anyone to know? asked Mouse, smelling his flower. Ratty straightened his stick on top of his pile and stepped back. Not bad. It's even worse looking than my other house. I had to move because of badgers, said Ratty, poking his nose between his sticks and cactus leaves. He pushed his way down and disappeared beneath. Ouch, said Ratty, looking out again. Like to come inside for a spot of tea? Well said Mouse, staring at the cactus prickers. I think I'd better go home. It's my supper time, you see, and... Tomorrow, then, said Ratty, waving his paw. See you tomorrow, neighbor. Oh, ouch! And he disappeared again. Mouse stood for a moment, staring at Ratty's heap at the end of his yard. The moonlight silvered the cactus and stones and even the sticks alike. But in the morning, said Mouse to himself, it will look just like the dump. He shook his head and went inside, shutting his door behind him. Mouse was up early the next morning, making his breakfast. His tea kettle whistled softly on the stove. Thump, thump, thump. What's that? said Mouse, dropping his cup. Rocks and dirt showered down onto his sofa, and he scrambled behind the stove. Anybody home? Reddy poked his head through a large hole in Mouse's wall. He pushed himself through and hopped down onto the sofa below. Bullseye, said Ratty. What luck. I was making my back room a bit longer, and here comes into your house. So it has, said Mouse, picking up his cup. The handle had broken off, which made him feel even crosser. Ratty, he said, you've made a large hole in my wall. Isn't that nice, said Ratty, sitting down at Mouse's breakfast table. Now we can really be good neighbors. If I need to borrow something, I can pop right in and out again. You can do the same, of course. What's mine is yours, and what's yours is mine. What's mine is not yours, said Mouse crossly. This is my house, and I don't want a hole in my wall. But it's above the sofa, said Ratty, pouring himself a cup of tea. It's so handy. 
we can just jump down and go oomph. We will not go oomph on anything, said Mouse, and certainly not on my sofa. He brushed the rocks and dirt off with his paws and stood up. The tunnel above ran back to a room where Reddy's lamp shone faintly. This is good tea, said Reddy. Have you got any biscuits? No, said Mouse, jumping down. I haven't. Do you have any jam? No, shouted Mouse. He pounded his fist on the table, making the teacup jump. The tea ran down his tablecloth. My goodness, said Reddy, why are you so cross? He stood up and stretched and then hopped to the sofa and from there to the hole above. See you later, he said. I have a little finishing up to do around here before lunch. Mouse watched him disappear up the tunnel. Then he hurried across the room to his cupboard and took down a large round picture hanging above. Grandfather Pocket Mouse will have to cover the holes, said Mouse, until I can patch it up. He climbed the sofa and hung the portrait over a root. There. Who would know there's a hole at all, he said, stepping backwards, and fell off. Drat that pack rat, said Mouse, flinging down a stone. Good neighbors. Ha! By lunchtime, Mouse had cleared away the stones and dirt from his room. Then he warmed his tea and ate some toast. At last he settled down for his morning nap. What? said Mouse, rubbing his eyes. Who's there? Me again, said Ratty, pushing out from under the picture. I forgot to borrow some cheese. Cheese, said Mouse. And bread, said Ratty, for lunch. Lunch, said Mouse. Ratty jumped down onto the sofa. Dust covered his head and a cactus leaf hung from his ear. I said to myself, I said, said Ratty, why don't you run down to see your good neighbor Mouse? Perhaps you and he can have a little bite to eat together, being such good neighbors and all. I've just eaten, said Mouse. Anything left? asked Ratty. Ratty, said Mouse sternly, I think there are some things you should know. Being good neighbors means you don't bother somebody else. Bother, said Ratty. You don't make holes in somebody's wall, and you don't borrow cheese and bread and wake somebody up from his nap. Whose nap? asked Ratty. My nap, said Mouse. You're not being a very good neighbor, and I'm getting very tired. Why don't you take a nap? asked Ratty. I'm trying to, shouted Mouse. I think I'll go home, said Ratty. He looked as if he might cry. Goodbye, said Mouse. Ratty climbed through the hole above the sofa. The picture swung back and forth behind him. And I hope, said Mouse, pulling up his covers, that that's that. He slept peacefully for the rest of the day. By late afternoon, the sun had gone down and the desert above had grown cooler. Mouse made his way up the tunnel and ran out into the moonlight. He gathered seeds from under a bush and found some cactus apples. Delicious, said Mouse, biting between the prickers. What a lovely night. I wonder where everyone is. Watch out, said a tiny moth. The badger is out looking for a supper. The badger, said Mouse, who's he? The badger is very large, said the moth. He likes to eat mice and rats. Pocket mice, said Mouse, dropping the seeds. Especially pocket mice, said the moth, shuddering his wings. I think I'll go home, said Mouse. I think I'll go home right away. He ran quickly over the sand, forgetting his seeds and apples. It's a good thing Moth warned Mouse of the dangers that lay ahead. Mouse has a long journey. All he needs to do is get home safely. There's my house, said Mouse. Thank heavens. The creosote bushes rustled. Something large was behind them. It's the badger, said the mouse, jumping in the air. It's the badger for sure. He leaped for his door and shut it behind him. The badger crept out into the moonlight. He stood before Mouse's green door. Oh, help, 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 cried Mouse, running about his room. I forgot to fasten the lock. He hid underneath his sofa. Thump, thump, thump. The badger knocked at his door. Help, said Mouse. He'll open it. Oh, help, Ratty, help me. Ratty looked out from under the picture. Give me your paw, he said. Mouse reached up and Ratty pulled. Up he went and under the picture into the hole and just in time. The badger's paw reached down and felt about the room. 
His claws tapped the sofa, the table, and chairs, and then he picked up the stove. Ouch, said the badger, dropping the stove. Something's hot in there. He licked his paws and shook his fur, and then he shuffled off across the sand. Mouse lay exhausted in Ratty's chair. I've made you some tea, said Ratty. He poured Mouse a cup and sat down in his rocker beside the table. Ratty, said Mouse. Don't try to talk, said Ratty. You've had quite a fright. Just drink your tea and rest a bit. Would you like a cracker? Ratty, said Mouse. You saved me. Think nothing of it, said Ratty, taking out his cracker box. Tomorrow we'll fix up your room. And I was thinking, said Ratty, pouring himself more tea, that you're quite right about that hole in your wall. I'll help you patch it up. Oh no, said Mouse, dropping his cracker. I like a hole in my wall. It's so handy for popping in and out, and we can even go oomph on my sofa. We can, said Ratty. But you said... Never mind what I said, said Mouse. And I don't care if your front door does look like a dump. It's so badgers won't know that I live here. It's a very good idea, said Mouse. He settled back in Ratty's chair and sipped his cup of tea. Just a minute, he said, jumping up again. He ran down the tunnel to his room and disappeared. In a moment, he was back, swinging a bag behind him. I brought some cheese, said Mouse. Hooray, cried Ratty, clapping his paws. We'll have a super party. We'll celebrate being neighbors, said Mouse. Good neighbors, I mean. Hooray for good neighbors, cried Ratty, hopping over his chair. He spread out his crackers and smiled at Mouse. Pass the cheese, please. I hope you enjoyed this book as much as I did growing up. Stay tuned for more, and thank you for watching. Till next time.